Carbon capture and storage is one of the big hopes for cutting greenhouse gas emissions, and the UK is aiming to use it to create an exportable industry based on new technology. Imperial College London has just opened its own pilot plant for teaching and research in this emerging sector, and the engineer went for a look round. So basically we have inside our chemical engineering department a four storey high carbon capture plant. This carbon capture plant is using monoethanol amine as a solution to capture CO2. So it's a fairly well established technology and we've built a research and teaching facility for that type of capture process. So it's very important that young chemical engineers get exposed to how to run a chemical engineering plan. So there are really critical issues and those include starting up, closing down a plant, running it efficiently and running it safely. So it's very important that young engineers learn those skills and the pilot plan provides the perfect teaching environment to do that. So in our case we teach those skills in the context of a carbon capture plant. So when our engineers go out into their industrial environments they understand these important parts of being a chemical engineer. The plant had to be densely designed to fit hundreds of pipes and instruments inside Imperial's central London campus, but it still employs an established industrial technique, as the college's Dr Niall McDowell explained. So the process basically comprises of two columns, uh, an absorber column on the right and a desorber column on the left. What happens in the absorber column is the, at the bottom, you can see where the, the CO2 rich gas, this, this, this in, in reality will be the exhaust gas from a power station or a cement plant or something like that. The CO2 rich exhaust gas is introduced to the bottom of the absorber column. The CO2 lean solvent is introduced at the top of the, at the, top of the absorber column. They're contacted countercurrently, and as the, as, the CO, as the gas moves up the column, it's, it's, it becomes in warm, it's kind of buoyant, so the, the CO2 is, is pulled out of, the, out, of the, out of the gas phase and it's absorbed chemically into the liquid phase. The, the, CO, the now CO2 lean gas, effectively pure nitrogen, exits the top of the column, can be safely emitted to atmosphere and it's now completely environmentally benign and harmless. Now at the bottom, then at the bottom of the column we have this CO2 rich solvent, it's chemically absorbed all the solvent. What we need to do now is take that solvent and bring it to the top of the absorber or the desorber column, the strip the solvent regeneration system, where it effect comes down again into the reboiler and this allows us to remove the CO2 from the solvent. The CO2 then comes up the column and what you see again is helps pull the CO2 out of the solvent coming down. And at the top, the CO2 then is, is, comes into the condenser, so that any kind of residual water is condensed. So then you produce a dry, pure CO2 stream, which is suitable for compression and subsequent transport and storage. The plant won't just be used for teaching, but will provide an accessible research facility for academics and companies. In terms of sort of key research goals, one of the big things is that you can imagine a full power station, like six 600 megawatt power station, that produces about one ton per second, about a short ton per second of gas, okay, at low pressure. That, that's a huge flow rate, and that necessitates having a very, very wide column, okay, so, th and that, that, that therefore means that the systems are very expensive. So one of the key research goals is how do we make this cheaper in capital expenditure? Also, when you add this, these kind of, kinds of systems to popular power plants, you reduce the efficiency. There's, an, there's a big energy penalty, about, you know, on the order of 10%. The majority of that is associated with the, with the energy cost of solvent regeneration, okay? So one really important way to, design, to reduce these costs is the design of new solvent, new solvent materials, which will carry more CO2. So you put in one kilogram of solvent, and as, and as opposed to only having, say, 500 grams of CO2, we might get 700 grams of CO2. We increase the carrying capacity of the of this solvent material. That allows us to make these these systems a lot smaller, and therefore a lot cheaper. Then, if we can get them to carry more so, more CO2, but hold but bond with it less strongly, this this reduction in bond strength uh, translates into a, a, a big reduction in the energy penalty associated with solvent regeneration. So these are some of the key research areas that we're looking at here at the college, both in the Department of Chemical Engineering and also over in Chemistry. Automation and control firm ABB, which co-funded the plant, is already planning to use it to test new technology. But Imperial is also hoping that big petrochemical companies will see the appeal as carbon capture takes off. 